Hello pilgrims, it's Nadine from Nadine Walks and I'm back with another Camino video for you today. So I don't know about all of you, but I'm kind of in the throes of planning a future Camino, hopefully one that I'll be on in about a month or so. And it just got me thinking I should come back here and talk about another lesser traveled Camino route. So I already have videos up for the Chemin du Puy and also the Camino San Salvador. So check those out if you haven't already. But today we're going to be talking about the Camino Aragones. So the Camino Aragones is a Camino pilgrimage route that runs for about 170 kilometers from Somport, which sits on the border of France and Spain, down to Point de la Reina, uh, which is on the Camino Frances. So basically Somport is right in the Pyrenees on that pass between France and Spain, but it's south of saint jean pied de port And then it kind of dips down for about six or seven stages, kind of like dips down and then comes back up to join the Camino Frances at Point de la Reina. And so some pilgrims can almost treat this as like one big alternate beginning to the Camino Frances. Um, I think a lot of pilgrims who do come to this route are not coming to it for uh, their very first Camino. Uh, for me, it certainly, I had done a few other paths by the time I kind of discovered the Camino Aragones and a lot of pilgrims I met had been on other Camino routes previous to this one as well. But there were a few pilgrims actually who chose the Aragones as their first Camino. Uh, one pilgrim I met said that she had just heard how crowded the first few stages of the Frances could be, so she wanted just a really quiet and unique experience to start her journey to Santiago. Um, so it is a Camino route that has other pilgrims. Um, this is one reason I think it is a really great option. So it is certainly much more quiet and contemplative than some of the other more popular routes, but it's not going to be totally isolated. Now, it does probably depend on what time of year you're walking, though I don't know that I would recommend starting in the Pyrenees in the winter anyway. It's probably impossible to do that. But I do think in the spring, summer, and fall, most likely you are gonna meet other pilgrims on the way. So I walked in the summer of 2019, kind of at the end of June, and there were probably between, I'd say like 15 to 20 pilgrims, kind of on each stage of the walk as I was walking. And you know, that was few enough so that during the day, for the most part, I wasn't walking with anyone or I didn't see too many pilgrims on the walk, and I really liked that. But then in the evenings, I was always kind of seeing the same pilgrims because we were all staying at the same places in the evenings. And that really kind of led to a really nice pilgrim community and a really nice spirit of the Camino on this route. And so speaking of places to stay, another real benefit that I found to this Camino is that even though it's lesser known, even though it's not widely traveled, it has a really good network of albergues. So I think, and actually I'm sure I stayed in, in an albergue every night and at every stage of my walk. I think the only thing here though is that there are not so many albergues that you can't really break up your stages um, into maybe shorter stages than what the guides kind of show. Um, I don't know that there are any stages that you have to walk 30 or more kilometers. So it's not, we're not talking about these super long stretches between services or towns or places to stay. Um, but I don't know that you could walk like 15 kilometer stages every day. Um, I just think there are a few stretches where there aren't albergues or hotels or pensions or other places to stay. But for the most part, I found that it was pretty doable to kind of follow the stages that were set out in the guides that I used um, and then to stay at an, at an albergue every night and there are a couple really kind of amazing albergues really incredible experiences on this Camino there's the albergue in Ares which is kind of one of those must stay Caminos it has um, volunteer hospitaleros and hospitaleros running it um, they do it's a donativo they do a community dinner where all pilgrims kind of come together to cook the meal there's a tour of the village afterwards so it's you know just one of those really special places that you can find on a Camino and I think it's really cool that there is an Albergue like that on one of these really lesser traveled routes. Other things about this walk uh, that I think are pretty great, one is just really beautiful. So you're going through some pretty varied landscape. I think starting in Somport, you're again in the Pyrenees. And so the first stage, and especially the first 
well, I don't even know, maybe about half of the stage, you're kind of descending down through the Pyrenees. So you really get that mountain landscape. And then as you move into Spain, the terrain really kind of changes. Um, but it's really kind of gives you like both of those experiences. You're also passing along some really great sites along the way. Uh, there is a great monastery, the Monasterio de San Juan de la Peña, which is like kind of carved into the hillside and it's possible to walk there. So it is a detour from the main path of the Camino Aragones. Uh, I walked there, so I added an extra stage to walk. It is a kind of difficult walk, and I think most pilgrims will take a bus or a taxi up to the site. But it's a really incredible site that's, you know, very close to the root of the Camino. Um, the um, Church of Unante is also right along this Camino route. So that's before you get to Puente de la Reina. And that's a really incredible place as well. So it's a really kind of neat and special Camino. The fact that you have that chance to develop a pilgrim community. You've got some great albergues. You've got some really beautiful sites and landscapes that you're passing through. I think some of the challenges of this Camino... Um, while there are albergues to stay in, the infrastructure is just not quite as good for pilgrims as the more popular routes are. So there are going to be some stretches where uh, you're not going to have a chance to stock up on food. There aren't going to be bars or restaurants maybe along the way to stop in for a break. I think there are a few stages where you just have to make sure to carry a little backup food with you, maybe carry your lunch, carry enough water. Um, I also think getting to the start of this Camino in Somport is a little more challenging than other Camino routes. So again, Somport is in the mountains. It's right on the border of France and Spain, and there's not much up there. There's an albergue, there's a restaurant, and not much else. So pilgrims are able to officially start there and get to that starting point by taking maybe a combination of trains, buses, um, but the schedules aren't super frequent, and I think it takes just a little bit to kind of figure out how to get to the start point. So what some pilgrims do and what I did is I actually started further back in France. So I started about three stages back so that I could walk up and into the Pyrenees to arrive on foot in Somport. And that's possible because the Chemin d'Arles, which is one of the four main pilgrimage routes in France, that runs right up to Somport. So it begins in Arles, kind of runs for about... I'm not sure how many kilometers, but I think it's about 34 stages from Arles to Somport, and then it connects with the Camino Aragones and continues to Puente la Reina. And so you could really start anywhere on the Chemin d'Arles. I chose to start in Oloron Saint Marie because it was pretty easy to get there by train, and it gave me a couple of days to walk in France. And I think walking in France is a really great experience. Um, it's very the landscape is very different to when you cross over into Spain, so it's really neat to have that experience. And I also think it's pretty cool um, to actually be able to cross the Pyrenees. So the stage, though, when you are in France and climbing up to Somport, that is going to be more challenging. It, I was looking at the elevation profiles and I don't think it's quite as much elevation as the stage from Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port to Roncesvalles. So um, not any more difficult than that first stage on the Camino Frances. And then I think when you're up at some port and then descending down the other side of the Pyrenees, that can also be a little bit strenuous for some pilgrims. Um, I don't think it is like the steepest and most difficult descent, but it is a lot of going down. Other though than that, those stages kind of around the Pyrenees, I don't think this is a very difficult Camino. Um, it's not probably as flat as the Camino Portuguese, but it's also definitely not as challenging as the first week on the Norte or the Primitivo or the Camino San Salvador. Um, some sections are flat, some kind of have rolling hills, but it is not too difficult. So I would say that this would be a great Camino, especially if you've already walked one or two, if you're looking for a lesser traveled route where it's a little quieter, but you still want some pilgrim community, you want the feel of the Camino, you might want to stay in albergues, then I would definitely check out the Camino Aragones. So as usual, below this video, I'm going to post some links to extra information. I have a blog post that I wrote after I was on the Aragones, and I'll include that. It just has, you know, some of the stages that I did, where I stayed, some tips for the route. I also put together a couple YouTube videos of my walk on the Aragones. I'll make sure to link to those as well, as well as some other pilgrims who have walked the Aragones and they'll be able to offer a slightly different perspective. So I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon with more Camino info. Buen Camino!